Welcome to another video for explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at some accessories for the Latte Panda Alpha, which is a very powerful x86 based single board computer. Specifically, DF Robot, who make the Latte Panda Alpha, has sent me to review this 7 inch touchscreen and also this streaming cable and case. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have a Latte Panda Alpha and its range of accessories. And specifically we've got the Titan case for Latte Panda Alpha, we'll look at that in a minute. And we've got a streaming cable, and this is a very interesting peripheral. This is basically a special type of USB 3 lead, which sets up a client-server link between two computers, here for example Latte Panda Alpha and say a Linux box, although it could be between any two computers with USB 3 connectors on them. It doesn't have to be used with a Latte Panda Alpha. And what it effectively does is it creates a virtual Ethernet link between the two machines running at 5 gigabits rather than the normal 1 gigabit of, of Ethernet. And that allows you to access one machine remotely from the other using something like remote desktop or no machine. So effectively, you can use this with a Latte Panda Alpha to turn the Latte Panda Alpha into a sort of a real virtual machine accessed on another computer, which is a, a rather interesting idea. And clearly, we'll look at that later in the video. But uh, first of all, I thought we'd start with this, which as you can see, is a Latte Panda's uh, Alpha's um, touch display, which connects by EDP and also by the touch connector. So let's get inside this. I'll bring in uh, Mr. Scissors is on hand to uh, hopefully get us in. How do we get in here? Oh yes, it's got sort of stuff on. There we are, we can hopefully get in there, like that. That's hopefully got us in. All the stuff from DF Robot is always beautifully packaged. They're, they really do the best packaging ever. All, all this stuff is just, I, I just love the packaging for this stuff. Anyway, uh, enough of the packaging. This is the screen and, uh, whoa, there we are. There is the uh, the seven inch touch screen. Uh, this screen is, I think, uh, 1024 by, by 600 in size. Uh, and it connects in, or we can see on the back there, it connects in via um, connectors to, uh, oh, there they are, I thought there was a wire missing. There isn't, there's another wire here, because we've got a touch connector and also the EDP connector. So uh, let's get this connected up to the, the Latte Panda Alpha. And the first thing we need to do is to connect the EDP cable to the screen via this connector here. So we just raise a little latch at the back. This is always rather fiddly. And then the cable hopefully will just slot in here, something like that. If I can just get that in and still have you see me on screen, that's good. And that goes down like that. So that's now connected into uh, the screen nice and securely. And we now need to connect things at the Latte Panda Alpha end where there are two connectors here, display and a touch. So let's just raise, and I'll try and keep my fingers out of shot, but I'll raise a little thing so we can get the cables in. And now we've got the cable. Oh, there we are. The board cable is very, very keen to come in. The EDP cable, which hopefully will go in like that. Oh, that went in very, very well. And put that down. Always worried about breaking these, but that is fine. And now it's the cable for the, uh, the touch panel, which turns it into a touch uh, display, obviously. So we put that in like that. And that goes down like that. This is going very well. Let's just hope it now all works. And by the magic of filmmaking, here we are. We've got the Latte Panda Alpha up and running, the screen is on, it's working, and the touch functionality works uh, very well indeed. Now, because this is an EDP display, we can control the brightness. So if I come in here, excuse my fingers as I work a, a touch screen in front of you, if I go to uh, All Settings and uh, System there, we can find the display settings, and I can now dim the screen. You couldn't do that on a touch screen connected to a single board computer by some of the other display interfaces available, but over EDP, that works very well. So that's, that's really nice and great function. You could build a really nice, powerful small device using a Latte Panda Alpha and, and this touch screen, sort of a really powerful Windows or indeed Linux tablet. And one of the things I can't get across in this video is the quality of this screen. Just by pointing a camera at a screen, it doesn't do it justice. It's a very nice quality screen, very sharp, really, really good colours. Let's play a video. Let's play a, a normal sample clip and uh, put it up full screen. There we are. We can see the uh, 
insects and the steam engine, all that kind of stuff in the, the test clip. It all looks uh, very nice. I'm trying to think of the last time I ran Windows on a 7-inch screen. And I think it was testing out the touchscreen on the original Latte Panda. So here I am back on the Latte Panda Alpha running Windows on a 7-inch touchscreen. So uh, I'll come out of that. I can figure out how to do it. There we are. We've had a successful demo of a Latte Panda Alpha's touch screen. So, here we have the Titan case for the Latte Panda Alpha, which costs $19 from DF Robot, and which will of course keep a, a Latte Panda Alpha nice and safe when uh, in your pocket or in general use or in other circumstances. So let's uh, just get inside. I think this is quite straightforward even for me. It just uh, lifts and then comes out, I think. Lifts that way and uh, there we are. It's a normal, normal box, Chris. You must be able to get in here. I can never get into anything, can I? Deary me, how on earth does this box open up? There we are. I can get inside like that. And, uh, oh, there we are. And, aha, this is the, uh, the Titan case. And, uh, oh, wow, this is a, a wacky looking case, isn't it? Is it already open for me to look inside or has it got uh, screws and things in? Um, oh, no, I can get in like, like that. There we are. So, uh, and it's got... Uh, uh, screwed and stuff like that. So uh, I will just now put this together. And uh, here we have the last screw. Uh, it took me a second just to figure out how you put this thing together because the trick is you have to take off these two top panels so all the screws are actually concealed once you finish, which is very nice. And it seems to be a very nice case. You've got uh, access over here to the uh, micro SD slot and also you can plug in the screen cables through there if you wish. On the other side you've got a nice little switch which will, uh, you can probably hear that, little clicky switch to activate the, uh, well, the switch. And of course we've got access to the USB port at one end and to the HDMI and Ethernet and, uh, and power at the other. And uh, if we want to put the panels on you could of course leave them off if you wanted to access these uh, GPIO connectors. But if you want to put the panels on they just flick on I think like a uh, that and like uh, uh, that. So there we are. There is the very neat, very pocketable Latte Panda Alpha in its Titan case. So let's now open up the uh, Latte Panda Alpha streaming cable, which cost $29 from DF Robot, and which they describe as the first streaming cable with a uh, RNDIS and 5 gigabit bandwidth. So in other words, this is this USB 3 cable that links two computers together, client server, and uses a RNDIS, which is the Remote Network Driver Interface Specification, which is a Microsoft protocol, and it's mainly used across USB, and it gives us this virtual Ethernet link between two computers running at a 5 gigabit here because we're using a USB 3. So it means we'll be able to access, say, a Latte Panda Alpha on another machine, say, a Linux machine, and uh, effectively use it like a sort of a real virtual machine. That's the idea. This is a very interesting piece of kit. So let's uh, get inside, which should be a nice and simple. How do we get in? There must be a... I must be able to figure that one out. You should just get in the top, Chris, like that. It's a box. There we are. That's how we get inside. And uh, aha, there we are. And... Uh, as you can see, it is a USB lead, but it's got this rather large part, this extra component at one end of the cable to enable it to do this rather clever RNDIS thing. So it's um, not just a USB lead. Let's take the thingy off and there we are. How long is it? I can't show you that on camera because I'll go off camera, but there we are. It's, uh, it's about, I would say, about 50, 60 centimeters. So there we are. These are standard USB 3 connectors. They are. So let's now go and try this out. So, here I am running Ubuntu on a desktop PC. And I'll leave you to guess which desktop PC that might be. And I've got the Latte Panda Alpha connected using the streaming cable. You'll see that the small end of the streaming cable goes into the Latte Panda Alpha, the big end into the other computer. And to get everything running, I've used these very helpful instructions at a docs, lattepanda.com, content streaming cable, get started. It's all a, 
very straightforward. You basically have to connect in the streaming cable and you have to make sure you've got a virtual ethernet connection running on each device using a USB. If we bring up a settings here, your service is running here. We've got both a PCI ethernet connection, the onboard one, and also a USB ethernet connection. And this is set up so that uh, under a IP4, it's running as local link only, as you can see there. So if we go back to the instructions, I've also installed a no machine on both computers. We go to a no machine website, you'll see if it is software for remote access, freely available. And I've installed the Windows version of Malate Panda Alpha, which is running Windows 10, and uh, the Linux version clearly here under Linux. So if I now go to uh, applications and run up no machine, you'll see I've got one problem, which is that no machine is running in Italian. But other than that, everything's working fine. I can't find out how to change the language. It must be possible. But you can see it's found the Latte Panda Alpha running Windows 10. So I'll click on that and it'll bring it up and I can put in its uh, username and password under Windows for the machine. Just a small test password there will go OK. You could, of course, remember those details, but I thought I'd show you. And here we are now running the uh, Latte Panda Alpha's desktop here under Ubuntu via, via the streaming cable. And in fact, if I go a step here, there's a little thing to allow us to uh, full screen it. And there we are, we've got full screen Windows 10 running across the streaming cable. And it runs very well indeed. You'll see it's very responsive if we go to the menus and things. Uh, let's run up so that Windows 3D Viewer, that's quite a nice test program. I don't want the welcome screen, thank you very much. Let's run that up. And uh, let's have the bee flying. I like the bee flying, or is it a wasp flying? I don't know, anyway, that's a good uh, thing to test out uh, performance, isn't it? That seems to be working absolutely fine. And uh, let's also test some video playback. So we'll play some video on the uh, Latte Panda Alpha. Did I get it? No, I didn't. You'd think I know what I was doing, wouldn't you? But never mind. There's some video playing. Let's, uh, let's full screen it from down uh, there. So this is clearly playing across the streaming cable and it looks to be good, very, very usable playback. Nothing wrong with that at all. So let's uh, come out of that. So uh, there we are. This is working uh, very well indeed. Let's go back to uh, having a window like that and like uh, that. I'm getting used to this. This is, this is very impressive. So if you wanted to be running, say, Linux most of the time, but have access to hardware-based Windows 10 remotely via a cable, this, this clearly would work. So there's all sorts of possibilities how you might use this. Let's scroll down so we can uh, close down the Latte Pad Alpha in a proper manner using uh, the uh, normal stuff. There we are, it'll now close down, of course. There we are and obviously our connection will drop via a known machine. So let's uh, close it down, down there. And there we are. We've had a demo of using the streaming cable on the Latte Panda Alpha. Earlier this year, I made a video called Latte Panda Alpha Week, in which I used the Latte Panda Alpha as my only computer for a week and I showed it was possible to use it to do things like video compositing and video editing. The Latte Panda Alpha Re is a very powerful small computer. And in that context, it's great to have the accessories for the board, particularly the Titan case. So you can carry around a Latte Panda Alpha in your pocket without risk of damaging it. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.